Hi there, users of the web. I'm going to be giving you a new tutorial series unlike any other. It's called 7 Minutes with Debug as part of a series being presented to you by modwith.us, a new open mod and open hack resource. Today I'm going to be teaching you the structure of a program in 7 minutes or less. And take notes, do whatever you need to do, pay attention. I'm going to be going through it a few times. And I hope you get all the information. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. Or join the forum and let me know. I'm always on there. So let's start it out here. So we're going to talk about the structure of a program. And a computer program, uh, we're going to be talking about C++ in general, is a sequence of instructions that tell the computer what to do. Now part of that structure and those sequence of instructions, there's two things that I like to talk about, two main things, statements and expressions. The most common type of instruction in a program is the statement. A statement in C++ is literally the smallest independent unit in the language. It's analogous to a sentence in, in, in English, you know, regular language. And we write sentences to convey an idea. In C++ we write statements to tell the compiler that we want to perform a task. Kind of the same thing. Statements in C++ are terminated by a semicolon though, not a period. So, so it's one of the things that's different here. And there's many different kinds of statements in C++, and, and the following that I'm, I'm going to type out for you are the most common types of simple statements. And I'll tell you what they are in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and declare something here. I'll set this to 20, and I'll do... Yeah, messed up here. And right here, the first line right here, line 5, that uh, my cursor is at, is called a declaration statement. It tells the compiler that nx is a variable of the integer type. And all variables in a program must be declared before they are used. We'll talk about variables in a later tutorial, but this is just over statements, expressions, and, and so forth. The next line, nx equals 20, is not called the assignment statement. It assigns the value 20 to nx, the variable nx. And lastly, line 7, right here, prints out the value but it is also called the output statement and it outputs the value of nx to the screen. The compiler is also capable of uh, well resolving expressions and an expression is, an, is a mathematical entity, entity that evaluates to a value. For example in the math expression uh, in math the expression 2 plus 3 evaluates to 5. So expressions can involve values, variables, operators, sometimes functions. And they can be singular or compound. Which compound literally means like if I want to do, uh, well, I'll just say nx times ny minus 3. It's compound right there. And <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example statement here. I can also do something like this nx equals 20 plus 30. And what that does, that is a valid assignment statement because the expression 20 plus 30 evaluates to the value of 50 and the value of 50 is then assigned to an x and this is the assignment operator equals right there this is the assignment operator right there all right so the next thing is the next very important part of a of a program is functions and these come right after you know statements and expressions these are the next best most important thing <coughs> In, and in C++, statements are typically grouped together in units called functions. And a function is usually a collection of statements that execute sequentially. A and every program has to have a function called main. And when the C++ program runs, pretty much the execution starts in the main function with the first statement. And functions are, you know, are typically written to do a very specific job. So, for example, like if I write a, a function with the name uh, instead of main, let's pretend it's um, do math. Okay, well, you, obviously there would be some functions in here that would do math, like multiplication, subtraction, division. You know, it, it would have some different statements in it. And, and also, if I wanted to do like calculate uh, exponent, you know, I'd have some kind of uh, some parameters and a few statements inside to help you know 
provide a definition for the function and that that sort of thing. We'll talk more about functions in a later uh, in a later tutorial. The next thing after functions is libraries. Libraries are groups of functions that have been packaged up, you know, built up, and are able to be recycled in many, like I'm talking hundreds, you could do it in thousands of different programs. Pretty much the core C++ language is very small, compact, and, and, and minimalistic. However, it comes with a bunch of libraries, and these are known as the standard libraries that, that provide programmers with lots of extra functionality. For example, the, the IO stream library contains functions for doing input and output, and during the link stage of the compilation process, the libraries from the C++ standard library are the runtime support libraries that are linked in the program. Now, if that sounded like gibberish to you, don't worry, we'll discuss it in a different tutorial. That's really not that important. It's just important that you understand libraries are groups of functions that can be recycled in different programs. So let's take a look at a <coughs> sample program I wrote. This right here is pretty much a sample program. It has your preprocessor, your function, and a few statements, and it ends. So I'm going to tell you what line one, th line one, three, four, eight, five, and six do in order like that. So line one is a special type of statement called the preprocessor directive. The preprocessor directive tells the compiler <coughs> to do a special task. Literally, in this case, we're telling the compiler that we would like to use the IOStream library. The next is the main function, which, as you learned above, is mandatory, and every program must have a main function. Line 4 and 8 are the opening and closing curly braces. Everything in between those is in the function and is used in the function. It can't be anywhere else. You can't be floating around outside of there in the white space. Line 5 and 6 are the first statements, and that's the output statement. And then the new type of statement you're going to learn is a return statement. When the executable program finishes, it sends a value to the operating system to let it know if it ran successfully or not. Zero is usually for success. Any other number that's non-zero is usually for failure. Now, that's pretty much all the programs we write will follow this template or a variation of it. And we'll discuss each of the lines you know, above in greater detail in upcoming tutorials. I just wanted to give you a basic gist of the structure of a program. And... You know, I hope you really learned something from this, and it's important that you you really try to remember the difference between a statement, an expression, a function in the library, and what kind of state, what kind of uh, symbol statements end with. It's a semicolon, by the way. So, if you would like to join us, and you have any questions, join us on modwith.us. The little watermark has the site as well, and we'll have it in the description. And leave comments below for me, and I hope you enjoy.